So you're fast. That feels like an oversimplification. Speed, glorious speed, has proven to be one of the best of superpowers one could ask for. Yeah, it usually comes with a metabolism that requires you to eat like 40 pizzas a day, but who doesn't do that on a Friday night anyway? But there's always a one huge looming question about speedsters, and that's always just who is the fastest? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. So let's zoom through some of the best superhero speedsters of all time to see who inches ahead of the pack. Let's get started right now. And that's my cue. Okay, there's really no such thing as a slow speedster. Everyone on this list would be able to destroy the average human being in the blink of an eye. But this is a ranked list, which means someone needs to be at the bottom. Also, yes, I promise you we'll get to truly fast superhero speedsters on this list, but I wanted to start off with a bit of a unique choice. It's Dash. Yes, Dash from The Incredibles is a speedster who can reach a solid speeds. It's been documented in The Incredibles video game that Dash can reach up to 190 miles per hour at his top speeds. Now, yes, that's not necessarily slow, but compared to everyone else on this list, Dash might as well be a turtle stuck in gum. Like all the other speedsters would probably point and laugh at how slow Dash is. Okay, they probably wouldn't since Dash is a child, and I don't think heroes just straight up point and laugh at children. But the thing with Dash is that he has a ton of potential. The Incredibles' powers seems to grow the more the characters practice, which means Dash will only get faster the more time he spends running. Okay, bring on Incredibles 3 with a teenage dash, please. The first Marvel speedster on this list is Speed, aka Wanda's Kid. Man, at this point in Marvel Comics, were they really just running out of speedster names? Like, what were the other options here? Fast? Quick? You know what? Maybe the true sign that there are too many speedsters out there is when you can't come up with a creative speedster name. Anyway, Thomas Shepard is the son of Wanda Maximoff and Vision. Well, okay, that's not technically true as the real answer is super complicated and involves souls from a demon and a whole lot of backstory that I don't have a lot of time to get into, so for simplicity's sake, I'm just saying Speed is the son of Wanda and Vision. Anyways, while the hero, who would go on to be a vital member of the Young Avengers, is quite fast, he's not quite ready yet to be in the same league as some of his other speedster counterparts. He's just a little bit faster than the speed of sound, which sounds pretty fast, but later on we're going to be covering people who scoff at the speed of light. Here's to hoping that Speed's introduction in WandaVision, with the stinger of Wanda's quest to find her children, means that Speed will be back on our screen soon and ready to join the Young Avengers, because we all want that, right? Hey, Sonic the Hedgehog is a superhero to me, okay? He's gotta collect all those rings and stop the evil Dr. Robotnik from taking over the world and turning it into his evil Eggman empire. That's basically what the Avengers would do in that same situation. Like, if Rocket Raccoon is a superhero, then Sonic the Hedgehog is a superhero. He's also, without a doubt, the fastest animal on this list, so that's its own special reward. Sonic can usually run around 767 miles per hour, so good luck catching him. How long until the multiverse in the MCU reveals the Sonic universe and we see Sonic get into a fight with the Incredible Hulk? Yes, please. But, you know, just as long as it's the redesign of the live-action Sonic and not the original design. That one was creepy. Ah! Oh, come on. Can we all agree that while Jay Garrick might not be the fastest Flash, he has the best costume? Yes, any of the current Flashes have sleek, hip, and stylish designs, but I think more heroes should wear hats like Garrick. Come on, you see that thing and immediately understand the vibe and the tone of this Golden Age superhero. Jay Garrick's history is a lot of fun. In his universe, he originally got his super speed by inhaling heavy water vapors in a lab accident. Man, there are just an abundance of different ways people can get super speed, am I right? Anyways, as a boy, Jay used to read pulp comics and was inspired by a speedster named Whip Whirlwind. That's what led to Jay donning his own superhero costume. In a fun twist, the multiverse made it so that Barry Allen used to read comics about Jay Garrick, and that's what inspired Barry to be the Flash. So when they finally met, it was quite an odd experience. While Jay is fast, he only recently developed his connection to the Speed Force, and before that, he clocked in around 770 miles per hour. Okay, before we really dive into the big Marvel and DC speedsters, let me talk about the absolute most questionable hero on this list. It's A-Train from The Boys. If you don't know, Amazon's The Boys is set in a world where the top superhero team are actually huge monsters and just overall rotten for the most part. <laughs> 
One member is known as A-Train, and his biggest claim to fame is that in the opening few minutes of the show, A-Train accidentally runs through a civilian and turns her to goo. Is he remorseful? Nah, not really, as he's a little hopped up on Compound V, which is the substance that gives people their superhuman abilities, to notice. A-Train is a hero, and I use that term loosely here, that is desperate to stay on top no matter what. He's been constantly afraid in the past of a newer, younger, faster superhero rising up and taking his spot on the set. Hey, just because you're fast doesn't mean there aren't faster people out there. It's been said that A-Train can reach speeds up to a thousand miles per hour, and he would have to ingest a lot more Compound V before he could even be in the same league as the big dogs on this list. When you're afraid of hitting your top speed out of fear that you're going to rip the world to pieces, then yeah, I say you belong on this list. The comic series Cyber Force was published in the 90s and focused on a group of mutants who were experimented on by the evil corporation known as Cyberdata, who fused the main characters with cybernetic implants to enhance their abilities. They soon escaped and banded together to form Cyber Force with the goal of stopping Cyberdata once and for all. That's where Velocity comes in. Velocity can run run at speeds close to 10,000 miles per hour. Now you might be asking, hey, floating CBR voice, how does someone run that fast without burning up into a crisp? Well, when she was experimented on by cyber data, they implanted her with layers of Kevlar underneath her skin in order to avoid friction burns. I know that Hollywood doesn't necessarily like to invest in new things, but if someone wanted to make a Cyber Force movie, I wouldn't be mad at it. Okay, now this is a name you'll definitely recognize. It's Quicksilver. Okay, quickly, when I say Quicksilver, whose face pops into your head? Evan Peters or Aaron Taylor Johnson? I mean, not even close, right? Evan Peters had such a scene-stealing role in the X-Men franchise that they had to write out the MCU version. You didn't see that coming? Okay, that's not exactly what happened, but after Days of Future Past delivered such an epic version of Pietro, it felt like the MCU went, well, we're not gonna top that, and filled their version with bullets. Anyways, the Quicksilver character has a long history in the comics and has been the subject to quite a few backstory changes. At first, he was said to be a mutant along with his sister, with their father being Magneto, but that has since been altered to where the two were given powers by the High Evolutionary. Whatever the backstory is, Quicksilver's fast. It's said that he can run on average around 2,050 miles per second, which is faster than the speed of sound, but not quite the speed of light. Though he has done things in the past like run so fast he outran a radio wave, and that's pretty impressive. He also has a sleek and groovy costume, which isn't necessarily important for his speed, but uh, I thought it was worth a mention. As awesome as it is to be a speedster, it clearly comes with a few downsides. Like, yes, it's truly amazing to zip around the world in the blink of an eye, but I've already discussed some downsides like Velocity being afraid to break Earth by running too fast, or A-Train accidentally running through people. So there are definitely some drawbacks. So that brings us to Stanley Stewart, aka the proclaimed world's fastest mortal, aka the Blur. Now there are a few different versions of Stewart running around, literally, but I like the version that was highlighted in the Heroes Reborn miniseries. In that, this version of Stanley Stewart runs incredibly fast, but also has trouble focusing on anything for an extended period of time. And really, if there were speedsters, this is exactly how those minds would work. On top of that, Stewart always needs to be moving or be active. He's described his attention span as a hummingbird on drugs, so you know he's just jittery all the time. Plus, he has a tendency to accidentally travel back in time and relive some of his old fights. Would you travel back in time to see yourself get punched in the face, I try to avoid that. Bart Allen has a fascinating backstory. Originally, he was born in the 30th century as the child of Don Allen, descendant of Barry Allen, and Melanie Thon, descendant of Earbard Thon, aka the Flash's greatest enemy. Those family dinners must be a little awkward. Bart was born with super speed, and that presented its own series of problems. His accelerated metabolism made his body age rapidly, so when he was two years old, he looked 12. He was placed in a virtual reality machine, which created a simulated world for him, but when that wasn't working, that's when he went back in time and met up with his distant family. There are other versions of Bart, as there are with any major character at this point, but I think this backstory just rules. Throughout most of his career, he was the sidekick to Wally West, and speed-wise, yes, he was fast, but he's never really been seen as consistently faster than any of the other major speedsters. And he should be wary. Originally, he took the name Impulse for himself, but later Later, it was retconned that Batman actually gave him that name as more of a warning. Speedsters can tend to be quick thinking and impulsive when it comes to fighting, and no one exemplifies that more than Bart Allen. 
The mutant North Star must have been thrilled when Quicksilver went through his comic retcon phase because now North Star has the clear distinction of being the fastest mutant in the Marvel Universe. Now, North Star's mutant ability doesn't just give him the ability to run fast. It's actually a bit more complicated than that. Basically, he can channel a portion of the kinetic energy of the atomic motion in his body's molecules in a single direction, accelerating his body to a velocity in direct proportion to the amount of kinetic energy he has tapped. So, uh, yeah, much more complicated than just running really fast. He can also fly, so that's a fun little side power. So just how fast is North Star exactly? Well, recently it's been revealed that North Star can reach a velocity of 189,299 miles per second if he wanted to, which does make him faster than the speed of light. But he actually avoids this because if he did dabble with that sort of speed, then he says he wouldn't be able to control himself properly and just destroy everything in his path. I think it takes a really powerful character to admit that their top power might be too dangerous for them to handle. The Eternals finally opened in theaters recently, and we were introduced to a new team of incredibly powerful superheroes. Like, this was a team with a Superman, a mind controller, an illusionist, someone who could, like, I don't know, make tech or something, and then one who could shoot spirals out of their hands. But you also had Makari, the speedster, who I think quickly became a fan favorite. Besides being super fast, she could also feel vibrations from the things around her, so don't try to steal anything behind her back. And the comic version has a more complicated skill set. So in the comics, Makari Makari is actually male, and he has spent his whole long life obsessed with speed. While other Eternals wanted to have a wide range of powers, Makari decided to focus all his energy into just becoming faster, meaning in the comics he can't fly like a lot of fellow comic Eternals, and he's much more vulnerable when he gets hit. Makari runs just slightly below light speed, but the character's dedication to always becoming faster, plus that handy dandy Eternal blood, makes him a force to be reckoned with. It's going to be interesting to see how Makari continues to grow in the MCU and where her character goes. The last speedster we had in the MCU didn't last that long, so hopefully Makari has better luck. Okay, I know this list has been all heroes up until now, but there's one particular evil-ish speedster that I just really wanted to mention. It's Black Racer. He's a physical manifestation of an aspect of death who was once captured by Darkseid himself and forced to work under the Lord of Apocalypse. And here's why I wanted to discuss this character. The reason he's a speedster and is able to move at the speed of light is because he uses a pair of skis. Like, isn't that just a little hilarious? Imagine the Grim Reaper coming to greet you and he arrives with equipment that makes it look like he's out on his way to a winter vacation in the mountains somewhere. You'd probably laugh at him. Well, actually, you probably wouldn't laugh for long since this speedster has the ability to basically touch you and make you, uh, not alive anymore. So this is the last speedster you want to play tag with. Barry Allen has become an incredibly popular character thanks to the comics, of course, and obviously the CW show. And naturally, he'd rank pretty high on this list. He's proven that he can run at the speed of light relatively consistently, and of course, when the situation calls for it, he can run even faster. Like, if it was the CW version of Barry Allen, he would just need someone to tell him to run a bit faster, and then he'll just, you know, do it. Anyways, the comic version of Barry Allen has a long history of increasing his speed over time. He's also the Scarlet Speedster with the strongest connection to the Speed Force because, well, he technically created the Speed Force. So yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Although he may not run the fastest, he's in tune with the very nature of speed in a way a lot of other speedsters just aren't. So in the Marvel comics, there are a series of supreme beings called the Elders, and they've basically been around forever. In the MCU, we've met two of them, the Collector and the Grandmaster. Well, now I'm going to talk about another one who could be introduced down the line, and that's the Runner. And throughout the last few billion years, give or take a few thousand or so, the Runner has strived to become the fastest being in the Marvel Universe. He can achieve absolute speed, which means his maximum velocity is essentially limitless. And he likes to host galactic marathons against other speedsters to prove he's the fastest. At one point, he had the Space Stone, you know, the thing Thanos wanted, and that amplified his power so much that he often could arrive at a place before knowing that's where he was going, essentially going faster than his own thoughts. Yeah, that's pretty fast. 
Okay, for number one, I have to put Wally West. Yes, the runner is an elder, but Wally West is a main character of his own comic series. He will always be fastest when he needs to be. Now, picking Wally as the fastest Flash might be questionable to some, as the debate just over who's faster between Wally and Barry has raged for years. But I think it's pretty clear to say that Wally is definitely the fastest, and it doesn't even seem that close. Like, the comics had Barry struggle to break the time barrier, but Wally can do it with relative ease and actually helped Barry out with that. The only thing holding Wally back was a mental block he once put on himself because he didn't want to replace Barry. But of course, he eventually got over it, pushed through, and then just kept on running. The comics are filled with instances that prove why he's the fastest ever, and my personal favorite is the time he evacuated like half a million people out of North Korea in one thousandth of a microsecond. Wowza. You heard it, folks! Straight from the source! We're better than you! Yeah. Wait, no! Look, there just wasn't space on this list, but we all know SpongeBob SquarePants was the fastest superhero speedster in existence when he took over to become the Quickster. I mean, did you see how fast he ran to that mountain and back? Truly scary stuff. 